He has an elegant problem and I'm going to walk you through the thinking process as a professional mathematician. So we have a non-zero polynomial p of x and p of p of x, the composition, is equal to p of x plus p of x plus 100. And I'll walk through what this means. That's part of this video. We want to find p of 5. Now, my first thought with these problems is they can be devilishly complicated, especially general functional equations like this. But a crucial ingredient here is that p is a polynomial. And polynomials we can write down explicitly and try to solve for their coefficients. So that's my first thought when seeing this problem. So let's just try to understand the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Let's just write out what we know, okay? In math, even if you're stuck, just write out what you know, and that goes a long way, okay? So we're going to get p of x equals to, we can write it out, a n x to the n, a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, right? This is just writing it out as a polynomial, and we keep on going, plus a 1 x plus a naught, okay? So the a n through a naught are the coefficients of p. Let's just assume they're real numbers, okay? This problem is with real coefficients, and so we want to actually find out what this means, what this equation means when you write it out that way. And this is going to give us a little bit of a clue. Now, when I'm looking at the left-hand side, one thing that occurs to me is that's going to be pretty messy, right? But can it really equal the right-hand side? And as we sort of work through this, we'll see that it looks kind of odd, okay? Something looks odd, because if we try to write out p of p of x, then p of p of x is you just substitute p of x into p, right, as the input. So x, you get this. If p of x is your input, you get your p of a n x to the n, that's, it. we're just expanding out the inside, a n x minus 1, x to the n minus 1, plus dot 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 plus a naught, okay? So that's just going to expand out p of x here. And now we have to put this whole mess as our variable in p of x, right? p of something is a n something power n, plus a n minus 1 something power n minus 1, dot 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 plus a 1 something plus a naught. Well, that something is this expression here, p of x. So we're just going to write that out, and it's going to get really messy. So we're going to just observe something very soon, okay? So we're just going to think about how complicated does this get in terms of the degree of the polynomial? So if we think about this, our highest degree term, so we get a n times, we expand this out, a n x to the n plus dot 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 plus a naught power n, right? We're just plugging that into p of x. And we keep going, a n minus 1 times the same thing, a n x to the n plus dot 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 plus a naught power n minus 1, all the way up to a naught. Now, observe that if we, if we expand out this whole mess, right? Our highest degree term, because here we're powering by n minus 1. So our highest degree term, when we expand this out with the binomial theorem, isn't going to be high, as high as our highest degree term here. I'm just going to write that n a little neater, where our highest degree term is going to be this thing. So I'm going to actually write it out in red. It's going to be this thing, power n, right? That's going to be our highest degree term of our expansion of p of p of x. And if we take x to the n power n, x to the n power n, is just going to equal to x to the n squared. So you sort of see that if p is degree n, our original polynomial had degree n, our p of p of x is degree n squared. Okay, and that's sort of very important because what we'd like to do, right, what we would try to do, even if we didn't think about the degree, is literally expand this out and compare coefficients term by term with this and try to solve. That could be a huge mess. But when you look at the degree, it gives us a lot of intuition because the degree of p of p of x is n squared, the degree of p is n. On the other hand, if you expand this term out, what happens? Well, we're just going to get p of x is going to equal, so I'm going to write it out, p of x plus, let's just write it out, p of x plus 100. And by the way, if you're enjoying this deconstruction and intuition, please don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe for all content on math. I do everything in math, basically. I'm a professional mathematician. I do pre-calculus to graduate level math, all kinds of math. It's a unique channel on YouTube that I'm trying to create, and I love all the support and to help as many people as possible. So liking makes a huge difference. Hyping the video if it's recently uploaded makes a huge difference, and sharing with people also makes a huge difference. So if we expand out p of x plus p of x plus 100, we're going to get a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, and you can keep on going, a 1 x plus a naught, and now we're getting somewhere, because now we expand out p of x plus 100, right? We're going to get a n x plus 100 power n, right? a n x plus 100 power n, plus a n minus 1 x plus 100 power n minus 1, and so on and so forth, all the way up to a naught, okay? a 1 x plus 100 plus a naught, and you see that the degree, because this is a translation of p, you see the degree isn't going to be bigger than n, right? This is a nth degree term is the highest degree term here. This is the highest degree term. There's no term of degree higher than n, 
Whereas in that polynomial, the highest degree term had n squared. It was very important to check here that no cancellation could occur because this was absolutely the only term of degree n squared would be in the binomial theorem expanding out the nth power of this sum. Basically, you multiply out this term with itself n times. That would be the only term of degree n squared. Every other term would be degree less than n squared because either you are powering by n some, some power of x that's less than x power n, or you're powering by n minus 1 or lower some power of x that's less than or equal to n. So all the other terms would have degree less than or equal to n times n minus 1. Okay, so n squared is the highest degree term there. So this couldn't possibly be equal, right? Because this highest degree term, the degree of this expression is, is basically the degree of p. And the degree of this expression, so I could say this is the degree of p squared. And this is going to have degree p, probably. Okay, so that's going to be the two terms. So how are we going to find out an equality only if the degree of p squared is equal to the degree of p, if the degree of p is 1? Okay, so what does it mean for the degree of the polynomial to be 1? It means it's a linear polynomial. So let's now get into that and work that out right now. All right, so actually, you know, one other thing with this problem, if it is a multiple choice question, is you could just play around with really simple polynomials. You know, if you try linear polynomials and found an answer, you don't have to know anything more because it's asking to find p of 5, assuming there is an answer. Okay, but of course, if the question was like, cannot be determined from the information given was an option, then you'd have to know that linear polynomials are the only possibility. But otherwise, if that's not an option, you could just find one solution and then find p of 5. And you'd know that has to be the answer, even if there were other solutions to this functional equation. But let's now find out p of x equals ax plus b. So p of x equals ax plus b, that's going to be our linear polynomial. Let's solve. Okay, so let's solve. So we get p of p of x. This is going to be nice to expand out. It's going to be plug in p of x for x there. So you're going to get a times ax plus b plus b. And now we're just going to expand that out, right? Expand that out, you get a squared x plus ab plus b, okay? So here it's just important not to make any calculation errors, okay? So we're just with algebra right now, so we get that. So this is going to be a squared x plus b into a plus 1, okay? So that's a, that's a nice way of just expanding that out. And now on the other hand, if we get p of x plus p of x plus 100, and it's going to be super beautiful, okay? We're just going to see this sort of expand out. We're going to get p of x is just going to be ax plus b. And if you plug in x plus 100 as x, you get a times x plus 100 plus b, which is going to equal to, again, just expand it out. It's going to be ax plus b plus ax plus 100a. Um, so I'll just write that as 100a plus b. And you're never too advanced in math to make calculation errors, at least from my experience. I make them quite a bit. Um, so it's always good to just be careful, even once you've got the concepts down. So we've got 100a ax plus 100a plus b. And now we're just going to write that out and say that's going to be 2ax. So I'm going to write it as 2ax plus 100a plus 2b. Okay, so that's our equation, that's our right hand side. And we now can compare coefficients. So that's how we'd approach this problem, even if we didn't know the degree was one. If it was somewhat simpler, you know, equating two polynomials, you're just solving a system of equations. Compare their coefficients term by term, they have to be equal, and that's a powerful method. Then you just reduce it to algebra if you don't see a nice trick, okay? But luckily we saw a nice trick, okay? The problem was a little trickier. So a squared is 2a, and 100a plus 2b has to equal to b times a plus one. Okay, so let's now solve the problem here. It's going to be really fun. All right, so we can equate the x coefficient. So a squared is equal to 2a. Now, a squared equals 2a implies, and you can cancel a from both sides if a is non-zero, and then get a is 2. So we get a is 0 or a is 2. Okay, so there seem to be two solutions. Okay, well, let's just actually think about this carefully. The next one is going to be b times a plus 1 equals 100a plus 2b. Okay, so we get that b times a plus 1 is equal to 100a plus 2b. Now, if I subtract 2b from the b times a plus 1, I get b times a minus 1, right? So I'm just going to get that it's going to be b times a minus 1 is equal to 100a, and that's going to be my other equation. And now we sort of see this is very beautiful. If a is 0, right, if a is 0, then we get 0 on the right-hand side, and we get minus b on the left-hand side. So b is also 0. But if a and b are 0, that means p is 0. And of course, the 0 polynomial does work. It is a solution. But we are ruling that out in the question. So we can assume that a is equal to 2. And if a is equal to 2, then we're going to get b. 2 minus 1 is 1. So you're going to get b is equal to 200. And so therefore, if a is 2 and b is 200, p of x is going to equal to 2x plus 200. And that's the polynomial. And now, what is p of 5 going to be? p of 5 is just going to equal to 
um, just evaluate 2x plus 200 is going to be 210. Okay, that's what P of 5 is going to be. So pretty cool problem, right? Hope you love that problem and love the solution. And I want you to just test out and see that 2x plus 200 really satisfies this functional equation, just to kind of practice and just to feel for checking the, the answer and just getting a sense of what was going on in this video. And I've got two fun videos for you. You know, there's so much fun math on my channel. I just want to show you these two fun videos. I'm going to direct them to you right now. The first one is going to be the following problem that x plus y plus xy is equal to 186. x and y are positive integers. The question is, find out the following, find x and y. What are the solutions for x and y in this case? But there's only one equation in two variables. How do we solve it? You're going to love that video. It's going to pop on the screen here. And another fun video you're going to love is the proof that the harmonic series, 1 plus half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth, etc. It seems like the terms are getting really small. It's actually equal to infinity. It's what we call a divergent series. This proof is accessible for everyone. Very beautiful, just simply adding fractions and showing that this becomes infinity. How does it work? Check it out.